Brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Coming to you live from Radio Canine Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Hear Hear from from your your government government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. one 800 534 Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. Today, Wednesday, the 21st day of November 2018. I trust that everyone had a restful, peaceful, and enjoyable evening. And that you are raring to go today. Those of you who are on the roads ask you to drive carefully, be courteous on the roads, follow the rules of the roads as well. If you do those three things, you will find less accidents, less fatalities, less injuries, and less frustration on the roads as well. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman, and by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse those busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. For the record, as you know, is a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman, and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on the local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Dorit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Our phone lines are always open. There is always someone there waiting to take your calls. This morning, it is the voice of Mr. Silver Fox. You can call us on our toll-free number, provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number is 1-800-534-8255. You can also call us on 949-8037 and 949-6990. Email us at For the Record. That is one word. For the record at C A N D W dot K Y. What's up us on nine two five three two six one or follow us on YouTube simply by subscribing to Radio K Man live stream. Now today being Wednesday, it is one of those Wednesdays that has been set aside for independent member of the Legislative Assembly, Mr. Kenneth Bryan, to join us on For the Record. Mr. Brian will be here after the 8 o'clock news. So what we're going to have in the meantime, we're going to have an uh, open line. This gives you an opportunity to call in to talk about some of the things that you want to talk about. And I would say to you, this is the time for you to take advantage of that opportunity if you want to be heard, uh, if you want to talk on the show. This is an opportunity because there will be less restrictions now than there will be when we have guests in the studio simply because the our guests have something to say, have points that they want to get across as well. So we have to sort of divide that time, the talking time between our guests and to you, our audience as well. I'm going to start by reading a very positive email that was sent uh, to us. And uh, it says, through you, Mr. Connor, I would encourage all employers on our three lovely islands to please consider giving people the joy of a job for the holidays. When employed, any legal source of income is welcome. Stacking shelves landscaping, delivering goods, setting up stages for performance. Please let us help give our brothers and sisters a chance at providing for their families, if only for one month. And I I think that is a very commendable suggestion that the writer has, and I would encourage all employers prospective employers to take that into consideration. I am sure that there are many business entities where employees are those who are originally from another country are going home for the holidays and you will need that additional help. 
reach out in whatever way you can, whether it be through adverts in the newspaper. And think of it this way. If you give a Caymanian a job during that period of time, you don't have to worry about getting a work permit for that person. You don't have to wait for that process to take place. And how good can it feel when someone who is unemployed or underemployed gets an opportunity to earn a little more cash so that they can make their families much happier during the Christmas season, the season that we talk about giving, the season that we talk about sharing. And many of us do that. Many of you do that. Give, uh, you share. Uh, Some of you do it all year round. And there are others who are more into it during the Christmas season as well. So that is an excellent suggestion that this writer has given, and I am trusting and I'm hoping that 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 will be taken up. We've seen, for instance, in uh, our news that there is a proposal to use prisoners as backup for a garbage pickup. Again, commendable also. But if there is also an opportunity for the government to hire, whether or not they have the financial resources to do so, to hire additional persons during this period to help with the garbage pickup, to help with the um, with the bulk waste pickup, then, again, encourage you to do so um, as well. We're going to stick basically to uh, local uh, news and uh, things that have been happening uh, locally. And uh, one that is of interest to, to many people has to do with the predicament that the long-term residents in the Cayman Islands face, those who missed uh, datelines or who were unable to apply for permanent residence despite being here for the legally required period of time, which is basically nine years. And I will read from an article in the Compass relating to the bill that just uh, went to a legislative assembly. And it reads, Immigration Transition Bill seeks to remove a restriction that prevents residents who have been in the Cayman Islands for more than nine years from applying for a permanent residence. Uh, In introducing the bill in the Legislative Assembly, Premier Alden McLaughlin said, these eligibility rules for applying for a permanent residence could be construed as arbitrary and were unintended consequences of immigration law changes made in 2013. So the um, one of the aims is to correct, to remedy those unintended consequences that resulted from changes in the immigration law in 2013. Uh, when the term limit for work permit holders was extended from seven years to nine years in October of 2013, a restriction was imposed that required anyone who wished to apply for permanent residence to do so before the end of their nine-year residence. And um, there was a sunset provision on that. You had a you had a time frame within which to do so, and if you did not apply within that t- time frame, then you lost the opportunity. So there was a sunset provision in, in, in that uh, legislation, right? The rationale was that there should be a cutoff point that coincided with the expiry of a work permit holder's term limit, uh, Premier said. The legisla- uh, legislation gave residents who were in Cayman for more than nine years as of October 25th, 2013, a period of 90 days to apply. So, like I said, uh, there was a there was a sunset provision. However, a significant number of people missed the opportunity despite repeated public announcements and internal government circulars 
at the time, and that's what the Premier said, many people missed it. Now, some of you will argue and say, well, they had the opportunity, they missed it. Why should we be accommodating them now? Sometimes people fail to recognize what their, what their situation is. And uh, in the absence of having the, the wherewithal to consult with uh, professionals who will normally require a fee for you to consult with them, some people simply may have lost that opportunity. Says these residents have since been blocked from applying for permanent residence. In addition to those who have missed the deadline, others have been impacted by changes in their personal circumstances that prevent them from becoming permanent residents under existing rules. And some of those may have to do with the death of a Caymanian spouse, the divorce from a Caymanian spouse, and other reasons as well. That, I'm adding that into it. That is not a part of the, um, of the article that I'm reading from. It says these cases include divorces from a Caymanian or permanent resident spouse who, despite having lived in Cayman for more than nine years, cannot apply for permanent residence and are unable to obtain a work permit because their term limit has has expired. And in this particular instance, these instances, what has happened is they can't apply for a work permit, their term limits have expired, and the hands of the immigration authorities have been tied, legally tied, preventing them from giving that permission, uh, you know, to work. So, I mean, for, for a person like that, what, what is the option? The only option for a person like that would probably be to find a government job where you don't have to apply for a work permit. Um, and not a whole lot of people probably have that opportunity. We have to take a commercial break. When I return... I will continue to read from this article, and I will invite your comments. Any of you who are are living that experience now, I would invite you to call in as well and tell us about your experience. Please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. The Cayman Islands, he hath founded it upon the seas. Since its early beginnings, the Cayman Islands tourism product has targeted middle to upper class segments. In 1949, Benson Greenall, a wealthy British visitor, began construction on the empty West Bay Beach of the Galleon Beach Hotel with a dozen rooms. Greenall was instrumental in the passage of the Caymanian Hotels and Aid Law of 1950, which provided exemptions for import duties and taxes for anyone building a hotel with more than 10 rooms. Along with the Galleon, the new law kickstarted started the development fury with Marin's Seaview Lodge and Pageant Beach Hotel. By 1960, there were nine hotels, clubs, and guest houses in the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman's Historical Facts Vignettes are proudly brought to you by Cayman National, with branches on all three Cayman Islands. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. I need a bank that is convenient for me. What do you mean? I need a bank that has easy-to-find locations and plenty ATMs when I need cash on the go. Oh, well, that's easy. You need to bank with Cayman National. They have seven customer service centers and 22, I mean 23 ATM locations. The newest one is at the East End Post Office, and I hear there's more to come. Well, well, sounds like I need to bank with Cayman National Bank, the convenient bank, because they seem to be everywhere. Yeah, that's true. Cayman National is everywhere. Surely, they are Cayman's convenient bank. Kim and National Bank, we're here for you. Hi, I'm Charlotte, manager of Kirk Freeport at The Strand, and I'm here to invite you to join me and my team at our annual Customer Appreciation Day this Saturday, November 24th. Join us for complimentary refreshments and prize draws at Cayman's one-stop luxury shopping location. We have all the Kirk Freeport product lines and top brands like Mickey Moto, Chopard, John Hardy, David Yurman, Omega, and many, many more. Start your holiday shopping off in style with Kirk Freeport at The Strand for our annual Customer Appreciation Day on Saturday, November 24th. Happy Holidays! 
You remember the sale at Vamp Motors? Yeah, the Your Sale, Your Choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features? Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself. While they still have so much to choose from, save big during Your Sale, Your Choice at Vamp Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back, add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice. Because you know what you need and Vamped Motors will help you drive it home. Vamped Motors on Walker's Road. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, formerly known as Professional Pharmacy, would like to thank the Cayman communities for their loyal support these past 18 years. Our staff work towards healthcare excellence and providing the most current and up-to-date training with pharmaceutical care. Thorough background checks and follow-up consultations is only the beginning. Your safety is our concern. Our staff are respected healthcare professionals whose job requires careful and precise calculations. Thank you for being a part of our family and for choosing CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, where we prepare to provide exceptional care. At CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, we care about your health. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. That's why you need contractors all risk insurance from Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Ensure you're covered in the event of property damage and third-party injury or damage claims during your construction projects. And with Fidelity Insurance Brokers, you can be sure you are getting competitive pricing and superior customer service. Call us today for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square, enjoy a Broadway show, or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. Cayman Kind is the Cayman experience. We work at the Cayman Craft Market. It is a myth that we do not need the cruise ship industry. It is a fact that when there are no ships in port, we do not earn a living. We depend on the cruise industry, and if it was to reduce by half, many others just like us would suffer immensely. We want to work and provide for our families. We need the pair. Support the pairs. Support our tourism. System 100. 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the record, with your host, Orit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. I'm your host, Orit Connor, and we will have MLA Mr. Kenneth Bryan in the studio with us after the 8 o'clock news. Meanwhile, we have... Um, open line where we're allowing you to call in. You get a little uh, a little more flexibility from me in terms of the time that you're able to talk as well. One caller, let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, good morning, Nosy. Good morning. How uh, are you, sir? Not bad. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I've been one that, that has been constantly saying that, um, you know, the cost of the docks, et cetera, you know, looking at the, the total expenditure and um, for government, for, for us, the people of the Cayman Islands, rather. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But last night I was just I was just sitting down, uh, had a few um, extra minutes to spare and, and nothing to do. And, uh, <laughs> you, don't, you don't get so that I, too often, I, I, I would know, imagine, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I started to research uh, the Boeing 737 uh, uh, max, the the, the the new airplanes that came in areas is going to be getting. I understand they're getting four. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yet we are sitting down here so silently and saying, oh, this is, they're, they're all looking good. They're painting it up and this, that, and the other. I'm, I'm wondering if people understand the price tag that these are these <laughs> Yes, yes. I, I, the, the price tag that I'm seeing, and, and I'm sure that it's going to, it's going to exceed that by about, by about $20 million, is $117 million U.S. dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> Here we are, uh, 
you know, came in areas that being heavily subsidized by, the, by by this country, by us, the taxpayers. And they have they have gone to embark on on this on this mission to bring these new planes, which I I think I, I personally don't see how they're going to be able to maintain them without without they're going to bankrupt this country. I mean that'd be the way so they, they they'll be able to maintain it. I, I just don't see it. There's been there's been no business case that has been brought to the public uh, for those people who are so privileged to 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 have the accounting skills and that they can see variability uh, as to whether or not this is feasible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the country has just accepted the fact that we're getting four brand new aircraft. I, I don't care how long a period is stretched out over. That is four, over $400 million in liabilities that we're, ex- that we're, expected, that we're expected to accept, right, as, as a country. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I, I am wondering where we are going, where we are going, uh, and the blatant disregard for taxpayers' money. The blatant disregard. I mean, we we have seen this from. It is it is so disrespectful to us, the, the public. Uh, and I mean, they are spending the public's money, and it, it should be more accountable, you know. And especially PPM, who who who, who campaign on oh accountability and and transparency. Mm-hmm. Boy, as I look back. That transparency is like mud. But, but caller, mean, uh, we haven't been hearing. I mean, you, you're talking about it now, but we ha- haven't been hearing a particular, uh, you know, a loud outcry about the purchase of these planes. And do you think it is because uh, people see that it is needed that we we, we have a history um, of uh, with uh, Cayman Airways, and it's a checkered history, uh, if I would say so. But, but, the Cayman well, Airways yeah, has had its people... up, up, ups and downs and, and right. everything, but has proven to be a vital cog in this wheel that we oh, call sure. Cayman. And, 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 and no one is suggesting that they don't need uh, to, to, to move on from the older planes that they have, but mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. embark on brand new airplanes, I don't think people are really looking and seeing what the total cost of this is going to be. What is the maintenance schedule going to be? What is this? What is that? I mm-hmm. mean... I think that 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 people just just took it uh, uh, and say, "Oh, we got new planes, so you know, let's." But it's a lot of money involved here. It is, it is, it is. Uh, <laughs> but we said we said that when we got other aircraft before. We said that when we got the seven, uh, the set. What was it? The seven two sevens. Uh, uh, you know, we we've said that every time. There's a whole lot of money, but caller, I I would say again that I think the Cayman Air uh, the Cayman Islands have. Good history when it comes to repayment of debts. Uh, I'm not aware of us ever defaulting uh, yet in terms of our financial obligations, and that that is a good good record to have. But well, see, no one is saying no one is saying that they've ever defaulted. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is, to what it's going to cost the taxpayers? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is my question. That I mean, you know, <laughs> where is all this money going to come from? You know, it's got to come from somewhere. Yeah, well, it, we, it just doesn't just follow the sky. It, I, it, it comes from somewhere, and we know Cayman Airways history. Yes, they've got more employees than any other airline in the world for its size, and they are heavily subsidized by this country. They are heavily subsidized by the government. So, I mean, and, and if the government is subsidizing them, that means it's costing you and I taxpayers. Yeah. The money to do so, but and so, but high, highly heavily subsidized, but highly appreciated. And talking oh, about the, talking, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yes. talking about staffing, we we don't want to say that too loud because most of the uh, staff working at Cayman Airways are Caymanian. So we, uh, you know, any downsizing. As a matter of fact, uh, just to, just to divert a little bit, having a conversation with someone and someone said, no one is talking about these new. Airlines that are coming in and establishing themselves and are loaded with, on, on the front line at least, with non Caymanian nationals, one particular nationality, which I will not call the name, one particular nationality, that they're loaded with them on their front, uh, at, at their front desk, at the uh, ticket agents and stuff like that. And, and, you, know, and you know who fault that is, Osi? Uh-huh. You know who fault that is? That is the government of the Cayman Islands fault yeah. because. That should never be allowed to happen. Yes, yes. Never ever be allowed to mm-hmm. happen. But I think I think also, caller, that 
Cayman Airways, they are recognizing that they have to step up to the plate. They have to tighten their belts uh, to a certain extent as well. And we have seen it, and some people see it as an inconvenience. Others see it as, well, if I travel on another airline, I have to pay it. Cayman Airways now charging for baggage, which is something that airlines have been doing all along. It was a, it was one of those um, one of those uh, goodies that we saw that we had with Cayman Airways, but they also need to earn revenue. And I, I don't think people are griping about having to pay that because we got away with it for so long in terms of being able to uh, not to have to pay for, you know, the first two pieces or whatever baggage as well. Well, well see, just, just, just for the record, I mean, I do not travel on no other aircraft, no other airline besides Cayman Airways once they're going to the destination that I'm going to. Kudos to you. I do the same thing right. as well. Kudos. I, I mean, that's, you know, but anyway, thank you for your time, Mosi. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for calling, thank too. Very, very, very good point. Um, someone else pointed that out as well, that people are uh, talking about the, the cost of the port, uh, but no one is saying anything about the cost of uh, the uh, airplanes and everything. But um, like I said, Cayman Airways has a checkered history. We, we continue to support it. And in Times of need, dire times when we need them, especially after a hurricane like Hurricane Ivan, they were certainly uh, appreciated. Uh, we're getting to that time now where we're at the top of the hour for the 8 o'clock news. Uh, when we return, I think Mr. Bryan will be in the studio to join us as well. So, folks, please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back immediately after the 8 o'clock news. Radio Cayman Time Check is now 7.59. This time check is brought to you by our friends at Price Right. Price Right is Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Making your dollar go further with huge savings and no membership fees. Get more of the things you use every day at the right price. But it's not just grocery and health and beauty. Price Right has a full range of products from office to automotive, patio furnishings to kitchen appliances, and even electronics. And since warehouse prices mean savings for you, every Everything is priced right at Price Right, Grand Cayman's Warehouse Shopping Superstore. The voice of the Cayman Islands. 89.9 FM in Grand Cayman and 93.9 FM in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Silver wings, shining in the sunlight. Radio Cayman. Access. Information. Your community. News and information. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. From Radio Cayman's newsroom, I'm Shanda Gallego with your latest news. Top speakers from a recent Institute of Public Administration of Canada Leadership Conference are in Cayman to share their insights here. The two-day leadership conference opened Monday, capping off a series of leadership initiatives rolled out during the first year of the five-year strategic plan for a world-class civil service. Cayman's new governor, Mr. Martin Roper, made brief remarks at the opening. The five-year strategic plan for a world-class civil service um, sets out an impressively clear vision of our future. One, that we are collectively co-inventing with all our civil service colleagues. The champion of the transformation of the civil service, Deputy Governor Franz Manderson, addressed attendees as well, beaming with pride at the progress to date. But I stand here very proud today. Very, very proud. Because the absolute faith and confidence that I have had in each one of you have been realized and exceeded. Designed to address challenges facing the public service under the theme, The Dynamic Leader, Responding to an Uncertain World, local and international speakers have spent two days delving into a wide range of topics aimed at building awareness of the global challenges, confronting governments, and some of the innovative approaches being adopted in response to these challenges. In other local news, the Prospect Red Bay Community Group, formerly the Prospect Community Group, is giving away free window and door alarms to every home in the Prospect and Red Bay area. Executive Committee Chair Ms. Sabrina Turner says the community group won first place in the 2017 annual CERT Challenge. Not everyone is able to uh, get an alarm uh, security system, 
So we decided to put the funds in and purchase alarms in bulk as a starter to a multi-tier approach in making our community safer. The alarms are light and compact, but also loud, with a piercing 120 decibel siren and can be installed on any surface in seconds, no tools required. Our catchment area is Selkirk, which is all of Red Bay, heading east to uh, Spots Newlands just before the, um, the flow exchange. That is the area that our Prospect Red Bay community group covers. The alarms are free and the giveaway takes place today and tomorrow between 6 and 8 p.m. at the Seafarers Hall on Victory Avenue. To receive an alarm, residents are asked to bring a current utility bill in their name or their voter's ID to confirm they live in the area. In addition to the alarms, residents also receive free neighborhood watch window decals. Turning to regional news now, the Bahamas government on Tuesday said that its embassy in Haiti will remain closed until further notice as it joined other countries in shutting down their diplomatic buildings as unrest continues in the French-speaking Caribbean country. More now from Carib Updates, Aslan Crosby. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the decision to close down the embassy followed consultations with the country's ambassador to security personnel in Haiti. The United States Embassy Tuesday lifted its security measures so that U.S. employees can get to work, but it said that the consular section is open only for emergency services for U.S. citizens. We now turn to the BBC with a check of international news. That's it for me. From Radio Cayman's Newsroom, I'm Shanda Gallego. BBC News, I'm John Shea. A British academic accused of spying by the United Arab Emirates has been sentenced to life in prison. Matthew Hedges, a doctoral student at Durham University, has been held in the Gulf country since May when he visited as part of a research trip. He has maintained his innocence throughout his detention. Concern has grown in recent weeks for his health. Britain's Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt said he was shocked and disappointed and urged the UAE to reconsider the verdict. The UN diplomat tasked with organising a peace process in Yemen, Martin Griffiths, has arrived for talks in the rebel-held capital Sana'a. The UN envoy will be speaking to the Houthi rebel leadership in the hope of getting them on board for negotiations in Sweden next month. In September, peace talks collapsed when the Houthis failed to turn up. Human Rights Watch says several Saudi women campaigners for the right to drive have reportedly been tortured in detention. The Saudi authorities have accused the women of crimes, including suspicious contact with foreign parties. Poland's governing Law and Justice Party has moved to reinstate Supreme Court judges whom it had earlier forced into early retirement. Last month, the European Court of Justice ordered Poland to suspend changes to the country's top court. In July, about one-third of the court's judges had to step down under a new law that lowered the retirement age from 70 to 65. Access. Information. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Did you know that you can download free hurricane preparedness brochures from the Water Authority's website? Visit us online at www.waterauthority.ky to learn more about how you can prevent damage and minimize danger in the event of a storm. Prepared. Be aware. Be safe. This hurricane preparedness tip is brought to you by Water Authority Cayman, suppliers of the world's most popular drink. Central Music Extravaganza is back. November is your lucky month with your Rotary Central Music Extravaganza ticket purchase of only $25. Win that grand prize of $40,000, second prize $4,000, and six $1,000 prizes. Yes, the 23rd annual Music Extravaganza, Saturday, November 24th. Royal Palms, West Bay Road, from 7 p.m. Music by Dr. Bob's Experiment, Fire Squad, and Altered Minds. Only a few more days, only 8,000 golden tickets. Get your tickets now through points of sale at Funky Tanks, Outskirt Ticket Sales at A.L. Thompson's, Foster Supermarket. 
supermarkets locations island-wide. Jake Scott Warehouse Store on Shedden Road and West Bay. Perk Up in Governor Square. Rubis, Walker's Road, Esso on the Run in Red Bay. Tortuga Store, Governor's Square. Jose's Rubis, Lorna's Rubis in Bodentown. Four-Way Esso, West Bay. Seven Mile Beach, Esso. Cost you less and www.eventpro.ky. Rotary Central Music Extravaganza proceeds fund over 50 community inspiration projects. Be a winner, buy a ticket, support your community. Your ticket, your chance, your community. Mm. Excuse me, I noticed you from afar. Mm. Really? Me? Well, not you. The KFC sandwich you're eating? Oh, Zinger. Sorry, I'm not trying to be funny. No, no, it's it's called the Zinger sandwich. Crunchy, juicy, 100% chicken breast, crisp lettuce, sweet mayo on a seeded bun with a little zing. KFC's chicken is not factory breaded, frozen, and refried like the Burger Boys. Customize your KFC Zinger and dip it in barbecue sauce. Wow, now I'm starting to notice you too. KFC, it's finger licking good. Radio K Man's premier health show. For the health of it with Tara Bush. Is brought to you on Saturdays at 9 30 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on 89.9 and 93.9 FM. Proudly brought to you by the Cayman Islands Civil Service Association. For more information on how you can become a member or the benefits of the CICSA, please visit www.cicsa.ky. For your convenience, the CICSA offices are open on Mondays from 9 to 12 p.m. and Thursdays from 1 to 4 p.m. For the health of it with Tara In financial news, world markets were mostly higher on Wednesday after two days of broad losses by big technology companies, which dragged U.S. indices into the red for the year. Keeping score in Europe, Germany's DAX index jumped 1% to 11,171, and France's CAC 40 added 0.6% to 4,954. Britain's FTSE 100 was up 0.7% to 6,996. Futures for the benchmark Standard & Poor's 500 index were 0.7% higher at 2,659. And for those for the Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.6% to 24,584. A 21-nation summit in Papua New Guinea, which ended without a final communique, has put a trade dispute between the U.S. and China in the spotlight. Draft versions of the communique showed that the U.S. wanted strong language against what it says are unfair Chinese trade practices, while China wanted clear opposition to protectionism and unilateralism. U.S. President Donald Trump and his Chinese counterpart are scheduled to meet at Group of 20 summit later this month. But it is unclear if the talks will spur a reduction in tensions. And traders are waiting to see if the European Union will kick off a deficit procedure against Italy for its draft budget. They are also watching a meeting between European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker and British Prime Minister Theresa May, which will hint at the future relationship between the bloc and Britain. That's the latest in financial news here on Radio Cayman. I'm Shanda Gallego. Cayman National Culture Foundation presents Errol John's Obie Award-winning play, Moon on a Rainbow Shawl. Don't miss this sensational production featuring some of Cayman's finest talents. Moon on a Rainbow Shawl, a story for everyone. Come, reach for the moon at the Hartwell Theater November 1st through 25th. Buy your tickets at Funky Tanks, Foster's Airport and Strand locations, and Healthcare Pharmacy Grand Harbor, or online at artscayman.org. Run off that extra helping of turkey dinner and give back in a big way this Thanksgiving. Register now for the Meals on Wheels Turkey Trot 5K and 10K Fun Walk and Run on Saturday, November 24th at the Holiday Inn Resort in Safe Haven. Registration is only $25, and there are lots of spot prizes to be won. Breakfast, a costume competition, children's race, and so much more. Sponsored in part by Rum Point Club Residences and Greenlight Re. Help Meals on Wheels fight senior hunger in the Cayman Islands. Visit www.mealsonwheels.ky or register at caymanactive.com. Registration packages for the Turkey Trot can be collected at the Meals on Wheels office in Trafalgar Place during the extended office hours this Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. To register, visit caymanactive.com or contact Meals on Wheels. Cruise tourism is a vital part of Cayman's economy. It is the government's responsibility to create an environment where our people can have an opportunity to grow and prosper today, tomorrow, and into the future. It is a myth that Cayman does not need cruise tourism. It is a fact that cruise passengers spend $200 million per year buying services from small businesses, tour operators, attractions, restaurants, and retail shops. Those funds stay right here, supporting our economy and communities. Support the pairs. Support our tourism. 
Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Good morning, Kim. Let's take a look at your latest weather conditions, all courtesy of our friends at Brand Source. Present temperature 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Conditions outside partly sunny. Relative humidity 88%. Last night's low was at 77. Winds are out of the northeast at 6 knots. Barometric pressure is at 30.00 and holding. Synopsis for this morning. Moderate to northeasterly winds and seas will continue across the Cayman area for the next 24 hours in association with a high-pressure system over the southeast U.S. Radar images show isolated showers in and around the Cayman area moving towards the west and southwest. Forecast for today, partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of early morning showers. Temperatures will rise to the mid to upper 80s. Winds will be northeast at 10 to 15 knots. Seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet. Later on tonight, partly cloudy skies with a 20% chance of late night showers. Temperatures will fall to the mid 70s. Winds will be northeast 10 to 15 knots. Seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet. High tide is coming up later in this hour at 8.37. It's going to be low at 2.40 this afternoon and high at 7.49 tonight. For tomorrow, low tide will be at 2.32 a.m., high at 9.14 a.m., low at 3.15 p.m., and high at 8.21 p.m. Sunset this evening is at 5.44. Sunrise for Thursday morning is at 6.38. And the outlook is for fair skies along with light northeast winds and smooth seas from Friday morning. That's your latest weather. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery. Creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Honey, our fridge has stopped working again. Everything in the freezer is melting. We need to get this repaired right away. I'm calling Brand Source Service. When you need the very best appliance service, call Brand Source Service at 623-5000. Offering service and installation of all brands and models of appliances. Brand Source Service is Cayman's source for appliance parts and repairs with qualified and experienced technicians and the island's largest stock of appliance parts. Brand Source Service will have your repair completed in a flash. So, whatever the problem is, call the experts at 623-5000. Brand Source Service, Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park. Telephone 623-5000. All right, good morning, K-Man. Of course, looking for the east, still got a good bit of traffic built up out there, the east-west arterial along Shamrock Road. Slow moving, but it is moving. You'll eventually make it into Georgetown. Getting closer, looking at uh, the roundabout just outside Kingsport Center. Traffic heading on to the Linford Pearson Highway is at a slow pace, uh, between 10 to 20 miles per hour or so. Heading along Crew Road, uh, similar instances. Uh, getting on to uh, Smith Road and thereabouts. You'll experience some um, traffic getting on to Hulda Avenue. Uh, moving slowly, of course. If you're getting onto Elgin Avenue or North Sound Road, uh, traffic will start to ease up with the uh, morning congestion. West Bay Road looking similar. And, of course, North Church Street, South Church Street is going to be busy this morning as we are expecting seven ships in total with a uh, amount of passengers, 17,242. Hoping that they do all come on shore and experience the beautiful Cayman Islands. Of course, look out for pedestrians because it's going to be busy in Georgetown. That's your latest traffic report. Kirk Home Center is your holiday season headquarters. From tabletop to seven-foot-tall Christmas trees, tree skirts, rugs, garland, and wreaths, to traditional lights and icicle lights for indoor and outdoor use, and LED outdoor scenic spotlights. Ornaments like shatterproof balls and treetop stars, and holiday accent pieces like candles, diffusers, and nativity sets, tablecloths, glasses, mugs, and more. Get it all from Kirk Home Center, your holiday season headquarters. The University College of the Cayman Islands invites you to a soft launch of its Prior Learning Assessment Program, an initiative that seeks to help adult learners fast-track degree completion by awarding course credits for demonstrated college-level knowledge. On Thursday, November 29th at 6 p.m., join other adult learners and talent managers at the UCCI Sir Vassal Johnson Hall for a special keynote presentation, networking opportunities, and delicious treats. Visit the official UCCI Facebook page for details. 
This Friday and Saturday only, you'll find huge Black Friday savings on mattress and laundry at Brand Sauce Home Gallery. Sealy King mattresses for $9.99 and Queens are just $7.99. GE Top Load Washers are only $5.49 and GE Dryers are $4.69. Samsung Front Load Washers and Dryers are just $6.99 each. We've got more models on special and you can save more by the pair. These are just some of the great deals at Brand Sauce Home Gallery's Black Friday Sale. This Friday and Saturday in Industrial Park. You don't want to miss it. The Paramount Carpet Pre-Christmas Blow Sale is back. For one whole week, starting Monday, November 19th through Saturday, November 24th. Save big with assorted remnant tiles, 250 square foot, $100 a pallet. Assorted remnant granite slabs, as low as $300 a slab. Ceramic tiles, as low as 75 cents a square foot. Porcelain tiles, as low as 99 cents a square foot. Area rugs, 35% off. Carpets, 25% off. Tools, 10% off. And all other in-house tiles, 20% off. Cash Cash and and carry. carry. It's the big. Big blowout sale at the Paramount Carpet, located at 317 North Sound Road, Industrial Park. Open Monday to Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturday, 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Call 949-5000. In local sports, basketball fans are gearing up for a highly anticipated finals tonight between Clemson Tigers and the Creighton Blue Jays. Radio K-Man's Dion Anglin has more. Day two of the second annual Cayman Islands Classic saw one of the top fields of the 2018 preseason tournament action once again. In the first semifinal, the Clemson Tigers took on the Georgia Bulldogs. Clemson was too big and too strong for the young Georgia team, defeating them 64-49. to Clemson shot 41% from the field in the first half, led by Marquise Reed's 24 points and 9 rebounds. Georgia struggled to execute against the Tigers' defense, shooting just 38% from the field, with most of their top players scoring under 10 points. The second semifinal saw Creighton manhandle Georgia State 93-68. to Creighton was clicking on all cylinders, shooting 44% from behind the arc and over 54% from the field. Creighton opened up with an early three-pointer and never lost their lead. Georgia State struggled to score from outside, shooting 21% from behind the three-point line and 39% from the field. This creates a championship match one could only dream of. The top-ranked team in the tournament being challenged by the Blue Jays, who are the fire thus far and seem unstoppable on the offensive end. Championship tip-off time is 7.30 p.m. at the John Gray High School Gymnasium tonight. Akron takes on St. Bonaventure at 11 a.m. and Georgia take on Georgia State at 5 p.m. Illinois State will take on Boise State at 1.30 p.m. Tickets are 75 U.S. dollars or 35 CI dollars for locals and $20 for children under 18. Reporting for Radio Cayman Sports from the John Gray Gymnasium at the 2018 Cayman Islands Classic, I'm Dion Anglin. Be sure to check out caymanislandsclassic.com for more. That is your local sports here on Radio Cayman. I'm Shanda Gallego. Well, Pirates Week is finally over. <sighs> now the Pirates Week staff can finally get some sleep. They should be allowed to hibernate till February or so. Is hibernate the word of the week? Hibernate the word of the week? No, but let's tell the people who will be on the show first. This week we will have Jam Mitch from the song competition on the flex. Along with the district ambassador costume winner, Jessica Ebanks from Northside. Wait, wait, wait. But what happened to the snapper cook-off? We will also be having Daniel Ansel, the junior snapper cook-off champion, and the other chef testants. Well, the great thing about the song contest is that we now have lots of local music to share. Did you see Jessica's dress? Wow. So, we are still in our season of creativity. Our word of the week is constitution. C-O-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-I-O-N. It is a noun that means a set of political principles by which a state or organization is governed, especially in relation to the rights of the people it governs. So join us this Wednesday from 4 to 5 p.m. right here on Radio k 89.9 FM for Youth Flex, a program for all people, by people. Youth Flex, more in time. No beef and cheese or Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. 
Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. The news there was a little bit long and I know uh, lots of our callers and uh, listeners complain about the length of the news. And just to let you know, we're still working on that to see if we can shorten that uh, a bit as well. We have one caller who has been waiting for quite a while. So even before I introduce uh, Mr. Kenneth Bryant to the studio, we're going to take that caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, good morning, O.C. Good morning to MLA, um, Kenneth Bryant. This is Johan Moxham. Morning, uh, morning, Mr. Moxham. Morning, 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 sir. Morning. I, I just thought I'd, I'd call in and give you some company because you were flying solo for quite some time there. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And, uh, I, I, I had advanced warning of that because Mr. Bryant and I spoke last night, so we knew uh, that he was coming in after the 8 o'clock news. N- nonetheless, I just want to call and say, um, one of the previous callers called in and and mentioned uh, Cal and the new planes and everything else, and you offered some commentary as well. And um, I, 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 I just think that uh, I was compelled to call in because I've been monitoring that situation as well, whereby when you look at Cayman and you look at what we have as a country, the one thing that we have um, that is good for us is a first-class credit rating, mm-hmm. um, and we have apparent revenue streams. However, what we don't have is vision, leadership, uh, in my opinion, in some areas, but more importantly, sound fiscal management um, that will help us get all the things we need. Because if we go back to the basic premise and the three of us are there and we've all built a house or bought a house, and, and this is just common sense, you can't afford to do things if you don't have the money in order to to, 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 to pay for those things, i.e. you got to cut your cloth to fit your size. When you look at the projects in particular being run by the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Moses Kukernel, and the potential um, costing of all of those items, the cost overruns, the lack of transparency, and, 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 and how things are being done, whereby the general public aren't told exactly what is being expended, for, for example, on the four aircraft that are being leased, whether they're two new ones and two old ones, we, the general public, the tax-paying public, can't get a clear indication as to what that total amount is. Okay, caller, if I can interrupt you for a second. Uh, You mentioned the word lease, and I only do this simply because someone sent in a WhatsApp and was asking the question whether or not the aircraft were being leased or being purchased. Uh, The the reports in the media that I've read over over the last year have indicated that these were leased um, 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 aircraft. Uh, again, if that has changed, only the minister and the ministry and Cal and its board can confirm that. But everything that I've read to date has indicated to me that these are leased airplanes. And again, you have to remember the premise of this um, 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 exercise was that this is partly such a fantastic deal, it made sense to get four instead of just getting two because we were getting such a, an amazing sort of deal on it. However, nobody in authority, whether it be the Minister of Tourism, the Chief Officer, the Chairman of the Board, the Management of Cal, so on and so forth, could confirm to us what this sweet deal consisted of. Now, they will say that the information is commercially sensitive and they can't share with the public, yet Boeing, a um, company that is traded on the stock market, can give you exactly what their price points and, and what it costs to uh, um, develop a plane, lease a plane, so on and so forth. So the contradictions are out there. We've now had the previous caller highlight that the planes were going to cost something like 110, 117 million um, dollars per plane. I think is, is is what he alluded to. So you type, you take that number and you times it by four. That's over 400 million dollars. But I don't. Well, I don't think we should take that number unless we know that that that, that, that number that that caller I, I, gave, I, gave him was just you know off well, the top of his head or otherwise. I, 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 I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, Mr. O.C. But then, sir, as 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 somebody responsible for the dissemination of information to the general public, it behooves the Minister of Tourism, Moses Colonel, and his team to share with the public and confirm what those numbers are. So mm-hmm. that there's no I speculation. agree. I agree. Yes. However. This is the modus operandi of the minister, of the minions, and of this administration, whereby we're getting a lot of headlines, but we don't get the the substance in order to understand whether we're biting off more than we can chew. If you just look at the record right now, and I'm going to give three examples, you've got the issue with the leasing of the airplanes. Nobody can confirm what that number is. It could be 100 million. It could be 400 million. You have the issues with the airport. You 
have a contract signed with McAlpine at 42 million. The budget is 55 million. We're now over 40 percent in cost overruns for the airport project. And to date, no one can tell us within the government what the cost of the cruise berthing facility will be as a turnkey operation. They will say, I can't give you that information. You've got to wait till the bids come in. But you have to know what your budget is on what you're trying to build. I, OC, Kenneth Bryant, cannot build a 10,000 square foot house if all we got is money for a 2,000 square foot house. And for me, sir, that is one of the larger problems that we do, have. Is that really how we do it? Or do, do we, a lot of times we don't have the money, but we have the capability of earning the money to be able to make the payments when the payments come due. Not, not many people have the money up front to build or to purchase, and those that do simply may not do it for financial reasons. Uh, so, I agree, but we, yeah. but, we, but we cut our cloth to fit our size, and we make sure that we have the means in order to pay for this thing. My point would be the principles of governance and, and financial management aren't any different for a government as they would be for a person you still have to understand that you've got the income stream coming in or the revenue coming in to satisfy mm-hmm. and, and, mm-hmm. And, and, and pay for those sort of debts. But I don't get the impression that anybody is prepared to be honest with the general public because nobody, if they were, sir, they would be more than happy to come on radio, use your show and say, hey, this is what we're doing. Here's what it costs and here's what we're trying to achieve. But I'm going to go back to a bigger point. Uh, very very quickly, have, very quickly, running out sure, of time. Sure, no problem. When you have politicians who are able to stack boards with their own minions, acolytes, and loyalists, there is no objectivity in the room because those individuals are loyal to the politician, not to the country, because it's the politician who's responsible for placing them. And when you look at what Mr. Kukarnal has done, he has stacked every board that he is directly responsible for with acolytes, friends, family members, and those that he know basically are loyal to him. So at what point can anybody besides a talk show call in or an FOI call in and ask questions of the government and get a reasonable response? And I would encourage Mr. Mr. Bryant as an MLA, sir, all of the debt that that is racked up, the general public, the business community will have to pay for because there's no such thing as a free lunch. And I would encourage you, sir, to get to the bottom and ask these pertinent questions about how much of these things going to really cost as opposed to just the flashy headlines that we're getting from the Minister of Tourism on every project that he's associated Thank with. Thank you very much, Carla, for that. You have a great day as well. What, what I would say again to that caller is that at the end of the day, we have structures, we have institutions in our Legislative Assembly that at the end of the day, the questions that he's asking... While they may not be forthcoming now, readily available, or the government may not want to give those figures now, eventually there are ways and means of getting those. You have the Public Accounts Committee, right? Uh, You have watchdog groups, and and this Public Accounts Committee is a watchdog, Mm. you know, of government spending. That, That information eventually will come out. It can't be hidden. I, I think what he's concerned about, though, O.C., is um, the commitment already being agreed to for those spendings will come out uh, in, and the information will come out after the commitment is already done. And that's where the issue comes up because you have no way to, to challenge it if you don't know the information beforehand. And I agree with him in that respect. And um, most times they will give you a lower figure um, with hopes of it doesn't cre- don't create too much turmoil um, amongst people saying the spending amounts. And then later on you hear it's 20% more than what it was or 50% more than what it was. Um, and that's where you see sometimes the political maneuvering and, and careful structuring of what they say and how they say it in percentages and using it in different currencies and all kinds of different mm-hmm. things. But he has a good point. I mean, you can't, you can't investigate something without the information. That's why you, you know, some crimes you can never com- um, convict somebody because the information or, or evidence isn't there. And, and it's hard when the criminal, in this example, holds the, the, the evidence to, 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 to a potential crime. I'm not suggesting that any member of government is committing crime, but uh, as an example, it is hard, and this is what people call for. We talk about full transparency. This administration has always been an administration that talks about transparency, but there seems to be some reluctancy when, when you ask for information. And some people see this pestering as well, I mean, because sometimes that's what you say about how you say it, mm-hmm. but do you have a fundamental right to know? Um, and I think politicians, when they talk about <coughs> full yeah. transparency, they have to be 
extremely careful of <laughs> using that terminology yeah. because there are times when you, for various reasons and none of them necessarily being nefarious, mm. that you can't have that transparency yeah. at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. So, you, see, you know, see, they sh- should be extremely careful yeah, when they say, it, it, you know, we're going to give you full transparency. Yeah, and you see, the, this administration will forever have to deal with that because they are the champion on that, and that's a history. Um, th- there's also history whereby you say one thing and it turns out to be another. You also have that history, and I think that's why we're seeing this type of reaction. This is why um, callers like um, 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 Mr. Moxham has his validity in his argument. I mean, by all means, nobody's going to have to challenge him because he, what he says is factual. Past evidence has shown these things. Um, they champion on, on full disclosure and... Um, and um, Information being released to the public, and they don't behave in that way. I mean, so he's certainly doing a good job of shattering the oh, yes. tourism, though. <laughs> that is true. He's, he's, a, he's shattering him. He's, he's a shadow like white and rice. <laughs> <laughs> um, good morning, OC. Uh, morning, morning, welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, though. We were right into the midst of it right away. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to talk to the listening audience across the Cayman Islands, um, and particularly those loyal followers of Radio Cayman. Uh, I hope to try to address some of the things that is um, that transpired in, in the Legislative yes, Assembly yes, yeah. over the last week and this week in respect to, you know, I came on the show two weeks ago and talked about some of the questions that I intended to put forward, mm-hmm. and I'm pleased that so far 12 of my questions have been answered. Uh, I must say that there's four of them outstanding that are probably the more controversial ones, and by no surprise, those are the ones that are, haven't been answered yet. But um, uh, let's see. We still have three more days left today included, whether or not th- those will be answered. Um, but but just, just to get right into the heart of it, I, I, um, some of the key things that came out in the Legislative Assembly, um, which I am, I'm happy to, to, to say did happen, was the Honourable Minister for, uh, um, for, um, for Lands and lands and Crown Properties, Ms. Juliana O'Connor Connolly, mm-hmm. has officially... Um, uh, purchased the, 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 the park, George on Central Scranton Park. So that's exciting news. And those are one of the things that you know that I was I was pushing for heavily for the government to 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 um to acquire. Okay. Um so so now we're at a stage where uh, the committee is trying to figure out what the next stages are and what involvement the government will be in. And I've reached out to the, to the Honorable Premier and asked them that we can we work together on this and so let me see how far that goes. Um I'm just excited that it's now Crown Property and the people in Georgetown Central will continue to be able to use that. But one of the ultimate goals and like your suggestion actually when you told me to talk about the Peppercorn lease mm-hmm. and um and, and what years to ask for, I asked the Honorable Minister Ms. Julie on the floor of the house about the, the purpose of the buying of the property was for it to be continued to be used by the members in the community. So uh, I asked her if the nonprofit would be able to to get a peppercorn lease, and she said just to make sure to um, help represent the, the committee to write a letter to cabinet. So mm-hmm. let's see what happens. Um, anything over five years has to come to legislative assembly, and I don't see no, the member. No, no, thirty three years. Uh, well, according to her, and she said in the floor house just Monday. Um, so I, I, thought, I, I know I know for um, a particular organization that I am involved with, we were able to get a, a peppercorn lease on a property for 33 years mm-hmm. uh, with the option of renewing for an additional two 33-year periods to, yeah. get, to get to the 99 years yeah. without, having to go to, without it having to go to the legislature. Oh, 33 uh, years, not, not, not five. With, without having it to go to, to the legislature, yeah. Well, there, there needs to be some explanation because um, that's not uh, what was said on the floor of the House. And a uh, matter of fact, I, I did some editing on my video just to, to send it to to um, my, my, my colleagues in the committee from the Georgetown Central Committee. And yesterday, on, on Monday, what was said in the House by the Honorable uh, Minister was that anything below five years uh, in respect to a peppercorn lease has to come to can, can cabinet can approve it mm-hmm. anything over five years has to come to the legislative assembly for okay. approval so um and she's the minister she, she, she's the minister so but, uh, but it's something mean, maybe maybe there, there's another way of uh skinning the cat in terms of getting to get well to i that. want I my cat quite, to be skin the same way yours was <laughs> so so we're gonna have to clarify that fact no i um, I, I would suggest that you, you also check with um lands and survey uh, to see see what the, they yeah. have to say but th- there may be a, a rethink on that w- what i would also um suggest we have about two minutes left mm. is that uh there are, and, and I know that there are some y- young architects who probably come from Georgetown yes, Central yes, as yeah. well, is the other thing for the committee to do. Instead of asking what government is going to be involved in with it, mm-hmm. first of all, get your plan. Get it, an architect to get out there and design something in terms of a, a concept mm-hmm. of what you want, want that yeah. part to look like so that you know what you want. And well, then you can start asking for government assistance, in, assistance and, yeah. or private sector assistance, because this is what we want to do. This is yeah. what we want to do. Well, 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 definitely we have to go that direction. I was yeah. in a discussion last night, but one of the things I think we first have to do before going into that stage is actually figuring out what parcels of land we'll have access to. 
um, which is important because there's a large piece, there's a piece that they bought, and there's an, another piece below that, and then there's an extended piece that comes off the actual government building's property, mm-hmm. which I would think, based on the, the mapping that I was have been looking at, is to get that separated from the government building to, to, to allow it mm-hmm. to be a part of that. Cause it's kind of a loose piece of land, so to speak. So once that is ironed out, then then you know the planning stage, because then you know what kind of land mass you're working with, because you, you can't plan on, on something when you don't know what land mm-hmm. you're going to have access to. So that, that's why I suggested the first priority should be getting the lease, and the lease will obviously state what parcels of land you have access to. Once you know that, I'm quite sure there's many architects uh, from Georgetown, like you've suggested, who would love nothing better to know that they were a part of something, uh, a, a dream such as, as we're trying to develop. So I'm looking for that. It's gonna, hopefully it doesn't be too slow and be like molasses, they say. <laughs> okay. okay, folks, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return the conversation with Emily, Mr. Kenneth Bryan will continue. You remember the sale at Vamp Motors? Yeah, the your sale, your choice. The one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features. Yes, it's still going on. But now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself. While they still have so much to choose from, save big during your sale, your choice at Vamp Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back. Add years to the warranty or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice, because you know what you need and Vant Motors will help you drive it home. Vant Motors on Walker's Road. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily non-stop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. I don't have time to understand this whole social media thing. And I definitely don't have the in-house people to manage my social media advertising. Relax. Yellow Media Group can help. But I don't even know how to run ads on social media. <laughs> it's all right. Yellow Media Group delivers real results for social media advertising. Let our Facebook certified experts and over 50 years of advertising experience do the work for you. That sounds wonderful. I'm too busy running my business. Exactly. Let Yellow Media Group be your social media team. We'll create a couple custom plan specifically for your business so that you can focus on your business. Perfect. How do I start? Call 949-7027 or go to www.yellowmediagroup.com forward slash Cayman Social. Yellow, we know social. Come celebrate with Putin Cleaners as they celebrate their 60th anniversary in laundry and dry cleaning service to the Cayman Islands by entering to win big in the annual Christmas drawings. Main prize is $600 plus other prizes and surprises. Pre-drawings will take place at each of our locations. Savannah, November 24th, Elgin Avenue, December 1st, and Centennial Towers, December 8th at 12.30 p.m. The grand prize drawing will be on December 22nd, 4 p.m. at Putin's Main Store located on 337 Easton Avenue, Georgetown. All customers with pickup tickets $17 and over, whether all or new orders, are qualified to enter. Make sure you drop your pickup tickets in the box provided at any of our four convenient locations near you for a chance to win big this Christmas. And don't forget, it's party time. Let us help you look your best. You feel good when you look good. We sincerely thank you for your patronage throughout the year and hope we have the privilege to continue serving you. Puritan Cleaners, 949 Zero four. System one noted. One eight hundred five three four eight two five five. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you for the record with your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me, none other than Mr. Kenneth Bryan, MLA, who represents the constituents of Georgetown Central in our Legislative Assembly, Mr. Bryan. Um, good morning again. Um, um, as my normal, um, every two weeks here on Radio came and I try to come and keep the people informed about what I do, what I'm doing, um, and relative um, news and information about what's happening from a legislative perspective upon which I represent you, the people of the Cayman Islands. And um, we've been in the Legislative Assembly since Wednesday last week, so we've been in the House um, four days now, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. We weren't in there yesterday because of cabinet um, was in um, session. Um, we're back again on this morning at, at, at 10 o'clock. So, so far, there's a number of things that have transpired. Uh, if, if you were a 
to follow a radio game man here, you'll hear some of the questions. I just spoke about the Georgetown Park, and, and I'm hoping that positive things come out of that, and the government and myself, as a representative for Georgetown Central, can work hand in hand together to get that, that community park, which, uh, by the way, the committee last night decided that they would like to call it the Central, um, the, the uh, Central Central Park. Mm-hmm. Um, Cayman Central Park or Central National Park can't remember but I'm quite sure they'll make the announcement but it's more focused on the Central Park so not only encompasses the community area but hopefully as time in, in, and development continues that it can become a centralized hub and almost like um, Central Park in New York um, so a lot of growth and, growth and opportunity there um, another thing that happened in the Legislative Assembly in the last few days is I brought a motion which I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Deputy Opposition Leader um, Alvis Aku for seconding in respect to having a flood a national flood management plan and uh, we know flooding continues to be a major issue across the island you have the, the area known as Swamp Washington Boulevard continues to swamp Windsor Park has some major areas there's areas in Georgetown Central I know Tropical Gardens have some difficulties with water as well um, Rand Dyke um, Prospect um, in many areas uh, along South Sound um, and across the island, there's various different locations that I can go through endless ones. Uh, and the purpose of, of that motion was to try to get government to get together on a national level with a cohesive plan where all agencies work together from a strategic standpoint of how you deal with, with water flows and rain, 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 rain water as well as storm water. Uh, because we really have no national plan right now on how that is done. Um, there's so much development um, going on. And with all the development, we're not paying attention to the way the natural flow of water works. And what you'll see, uh, and we've seen it transpire so many times where a person may have their property today and then development happened just down the road or even close by. Uh, they never used to get flooded before. As soon as the place is up, you know, they're flooded and they're, they're in difficult positions. Mm-hmm. So we want to we want to figure out a strategic way of dealing with that. Um, I withdrew the motion because the Minister Honourable Joey Hugh said that uh, rather than starting all over again, there was a plan started quite similar to what I suggested back in 2003 by the Honourable then Minister Kirk Tibbetts. Um, so rather than starting all over again and reinventing the wheel, let's dust that off and see if we can um, update it and, and get it back going again. Um, I think that that's the reason why that plan wasn't finished or completed because the resources wasn't wasn't there. Now, to create a, a national strategic um, flood strategy and plan is a very costly exercise because the, the implementation strategies of it, you're talking about major pumps, canal system, culvert systems, and, and studies that need to be done on the lay of the land and the, and the flows and there's some scientific reports that need to be done. But at the end of the day, because we're moving so fast in development, we definitely have to start paying attention to it now because the people who are most likely to be affected by, by flooding are those who can't afford to make provisions that, that their land is, is high or they bought land in a more lower um, um, water level line because the land was cheaper those different factors so the people who are going to be hurt the most if we don't do this are those who are less fortunate um, and I have to pay attention to them um, but everybody in a whole um, right. isn't, isn't there a role that, that, that the, uh, min, uh, the entity that is uh, responsible for um Disaster management, hazard uh, management, you know, hazard management should be uh, involved in. Well, they should be, but they uh, and I think they are to a certain extent because yeah. there there are there are maps that have been created in terms of you know flooding areas, especially after Hurricane Ivan. Yeah, yes, you know, and, from, and, from and, and you're right. What we're having is particular departments like hazard management having their own ideas and strategies as to concerns about it and they may have own reports then you have NRA who deals with concerns of flooding on the roads but not necessarily in private property then you have lands and survey you have um, water authority that's focused on the the, the water settlement and they have research there so ideally you want all of these different agencies working hand in hand together on the one national strategy and plan and policy and that's ultimately what I want because that way like say for instance if there is a development planning and national work um, um, national Roads Authority and planning can work hand in hand together to say, listen, okay, this development is going in. There's a natural water flow of water going in this direction or what have you. Let's make sure that we're not interrupting that because or put in um, infrastructure underneath the property or around the property to make sure that the water is not um, um, changed and, and change the flow of things. So, so, but at the end of the day, I am happy with the response by the minister at the time, and he's given his commitment. By all means, that means that, that doesn't mean I'm going to let it go because the promise um, is yeah, comfort to a fool. So, but I have to give him the the at least the. Um, the, the professional support to say if he says he's going to do it let's see what happens I'm going, to, I'm going to ask for an update six months from this sitting to see where things are at with that report because I think that if we do not deal or create a proper national flood strategy for this country now we are going to pay a very high high price in the future particularly with the effects of, of, of storm surge rain, rainy seasons and, and the way development is going so it's a top priority um, some other things not sure what the time is like before our next break but something else that was important that came up was you know I asked the minister for um 
uh, I mean, this is Julie, I'm not sure which ministry this falls under, but um, about regu- regulations for evaluators. Um, you know, that was one of the major concerns for foreclosures throughout the campaign, and people were concerned about these evaluators are devaluating properties in, in favor of the bank to try to get rid of the property and all this kind of thing. So during the, um, the, final, uh, the budget session, I asked the minister at that time, I think it's because she's in charge of lands, and, and those people are regulated. So from, from the minister's position of lands. So I asked her through, through the budget session, I said, can you look into this? She gave me her commitment that she would talk to her caucus and cabinet um, about whether or not they would try to bring in regulations to it. Obviously, that was some time ago. It's over a year now, a year and a half, a year and two months since, since we did the budget. Um, and since then, I asked for the update for the question. And unfortunately, uh, the government is going to maintain its current position in respect to regula- um, um, persons who um, evaluate properties, and they won't put in any um, new regulatory um, mechanisms or systems to regulate those persons here because they're saying that they're already self-regulated. Uh, in my view, I think that's a conflict of interest um, because... There, there is too many discrepancies that you've heard from the community, heard from landowners, and you have situations where evaluators work for banks, and the banks have a purpose, particularly if they want to do a foreclosure, that's more feasible for them to get mm-hmm. certain types of evaluations and stuff. So there's conflicting areas that I think... No, 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 but but wouldn't the approach, if they're saying that, then the other approach would be, since they're already self-regulated, mm-hmm. then let's put... Uh, can we look at putting mechanisms in place that the decisions that they make mm. can be contested in some form or, 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 or another so that you have some arbitration body or something so that their word at the end of the day does not become final. Well, that may be a different approach. If they don't want to regulate them, then give us, give us the opportunity in some form or the other to challenge what, you know, their decisions. Well, well... Uh, Ideally, that's what exactly the whole point of me asking for regulation because I don't think they're over-regulating. I think they have a reasonably good uh, regulatory system already. Um, but if there is any challenge, where do you appeal it to? Yeah. But in her explanation, she says she even talked about they have that own process internally as well. But we keep on talking about regulators separate and apart from any government involvement. And the government is there to be the protectors of the people. And you're expecting an industry to, 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 to do moral, morally right things. They're not obligated to be moral. They're obligated to make money. Um, I'm, not, I'm disappointed. I, I, I hope that nothing ever comes out in a, in a national level of scandal because I will be holding the government accountable because they have an opportunity to bring in regulations, but they're choosing not to do so. Maybe because they find it too incumbent. I don't know. Um, but sad they didn't choose to do it. And if, I don't know if we have enough time to go to the next question. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so, so another another question, you know, let's keep it to the foreclosure matter. Um, I spoke to the Minister of Financial Services, Honorable Tara Rivers, um, some time ago about trying to find out new, new potential changes to regulation, legislation, and, and system practices around how we deal with foreclosures in the Cayman Islands. Um, and she said she would investigate, and there's the, the legal drafting team. Um, let me just make sure if I'm, I'm terming that right, the, um, the legal reform group, um, to go ahead and look into legislation, regulation, and, and any practices that, that affect foreclosures and how the banking practices work to see if there's any changes that can be done to improve it, to make it more balanced between the borrower and the lending. Mm-hmm. Um, so she, she, I wanted to update on that because this foreclosure thing is still real. There's still many Caymanians who are facing foreclosure, and, and, and their lives are like literally constantly under stress. So to get an update, um, she gave me the answer that, unfortunately, their legal... Um, um, reform group is still doing their investigations and hopefully they'll come back with some um, new suggestive um, um, changes in the new year for a public consultation and also for the legislative <coughs> assembly to consider. So m- my job is to periodically check and update because sometimes if we forget these things, they'll just, um, once the, the public don't remember about it, the politicians don't remember about it, they just forget and leave it. Before closures for me is a very serious and important issue that many Caymanians face and, and you have to protect the one, the, probably the, the most important asset for any Caymanian has a roof over their head. Um, where are we at now with the... We have about four minutes left. Four more minutes. Okay, um... We spoke also... Two minutes, sorry. Two, sorry, two, two minutes. minutes. Uh, I'll just quickly say this. You know, they, I think we talked about culvert systems in South Sound. You know, there was three of them there. Um, I spoke to the minister as to why two of them were blocked off. Obviously, um, he wasn't uh, able to give a complete answer in respect to that because he wasn't in the house at the time. There seems to be no paperwork. And he promised to get those back to me in respect to why there were not considerations to work with the property owners to keep those culvert systems open. But he did recognize the importance of those culvert systems, and he's, he's given his um, commitment to try to make sure that the last one that's available there right next to the South Sound dock not be closed because that one is almost directly linked with Randag Garden and we know they've been having problems already for flooding and I'm worried that if that culvert system is closed off that the people in that area could probably lose everything they have so he's given commitment to, to look into that um, and, and potential using those culvert systems as, as new strategies to help in other flooding areas but I'll, I'll give you some more answers and some other things when we come back from the break Okay, uh, folks, please stay tuned for the record we'll be back after headline news at 9 o'clock
Kirk Freeport's Black Friday sale is bigger than ever with 60% off an incredible selection of watches, jewelry, crystal, and accessories. Get early access to the sale on Thursday night from 5. Bayshore Mall and Cardinal Avenue locations will stay open until 8, and the Strand will remain open until 9. Get unbeatable discounts from brands including John Hardy, Roberto Coin, Bulgari, Chopard, Marco Basico, and many more. Plus, there's an additional 10% off all non-branded sale merchandise. It's Black Friday all weekend at Kirk Freeport. Visit KirkFreeport.com for full details. A trip to New York City is the experience of a lifetime. Starting this December, Cayman Airways will be offering daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman to New York City. That's right. Cayman Airways is going daily to New York City starting this December. Stroll through Central Park or take in the bright lights of Times Square. Enjoy a Broadway show or visit museums, the Empire State Building, and so much more. Whether you're visiting for business or pleasure, you'll fall in love with New York City. And daily nonstop flights from Grand Cayman aboard Cayman Airways starting this December. For details and to book, call Cayman Airways Reservations at 949-2311. Contact a travel agent or visit caymanairways.com. Since March 2004, West Bay Pharmacy has kept their doors open to the local communities, even before, during, and after Hurricane Ivan. At West Bay Pharmacy, our staff provides so much more than pharmaceutical excellence. From the moment you walk through our doors to completing your cash out, our staff will have put your health care concerns at ease. We would like to take this moment to thank our loyal friends and customers. To us at West Bay Pharmacy, our patients are our primary concern. We provide thorough background checks and precise calculations to ensure your medical safety. Thank you for being a part of our family and for choosing West Bay Pharmacy, where we care about your health. You remember the sale at Vant Motors? Yeah, the Your Sale, Your Choice, the one where you can get cash back or can put the savings to extend the warranty or upgrade features? Yes, it's still going on, but now you can get $8,000 off a new Ford Ranger truck. $8,000, you know? You for real? Come see for yourself. While they still have so much to choose from, save big during Your Sale, Your Choice at Vant Motors. With almost every vehicle on sale, you decide whether to get your dream ride at its lowest price. Take cash back, add years to the warranty or or service plan. Choose an add-on or mix your options. Your sale, your choice, because you know what you need and Vant Motors will help you drive it home. Vant Motors on Walker's Road. Thousands of Caymanians work in our cruise tourism industry. It is a myth that Cayman does not need cruise tourism. It is a fact that 4,500 Caymanians work in this industry today. As taxi and tour operators, boat captains and crew, restaurateurs, retailers, water sports operators, and ambassadors at our attractions. If our cruise tourism industry is half of what it is today, what are we going to do with our people? The thousands of unemployed Caymanians. Support the peers. Support our tourism. is guaranteed 24 hours a day whether it's music or information from Grand Cayman to Cayman Brack to Little Cayman we've got you covered you ever hear a thing like that? Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands Radio Cayman Radio Cayman's newsroom these are the biggest stories right now The Prospect Red Bay Community Group, formerly the Prospect Community Group, is giving away free window and door alarms to every home in the Prospect and Red Bay area. The alarms are light and compact, but also loud, with a piercing 120 decibel siren and can be installed on any surface in seconds, no tools required. The alarms are free and the giveaway takes place today and tomorrow between 6 and 8 p.m. at the Seafarers Hall on Victory Avenue. To receive an alarm, residents are asked to bring a current utility bill in their name or their voter's ID to confirm they live in the area. In addition to the alarms, residents also receive free neighborhood watch window decals. In news elsewhere, British Prime Minister Theresa May will meet with European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker in Brussels on Wednesday in a bid to finalize a Brexit agreement as she continued to battle domestic critics of the draft deal. The UK and the European Union agreed last week on a 585-page document sealing the terms of Britain's departure but are still working to nail down agreement on future relations. EU leaders will meet in Brussels on Sunday to rubber stamp the deal, but sticking points remain. 
A judge has ordered the U.S. government not to enforce a ban on asylum for people who cross the southern border illegally. Another court set back for the Trump administration's efforts to impose new immigration restrictions without congressional approval. U.S. District Judge John Tiger agreed Monday with legal groups that immediately sued after U.S. President Donald Trump issued a November 9th proclamation saying anyone who crossed the southern border between official ports of entry would be ineligible for asylum. The administration argued that caravans of migrants approaching the southern border made the new restrictions immediately necessary. Those are your latest updates here on Radio Cayman. I'm Shanda Gallego. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiocayman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me this morning, Mr. Kenneth Bryan, MLA, who represents Georgetown Central in our Legislative Assembly. Before I throw the mic back over to Mr. <laughs> Bryan, I, earlier in the show, I read a message from one of our listeners encouraging employers uh, in our three lovely islands to please consider giving people the joy of a job for the holidays uh, a person went on to state that when unemployed, any legal source of income is welcome. Stocking shelves, landscaping, delivering goods, setting up stage for performances. Uh, and the person was, uh, again, uh, extolling us to please let us help give our brothers and our sisters a chance at providing for their families, if only for a month. So... Here is an opportunity. One of our listeners has written in and said, Good morning, um, Mr. O.C. and Mr. Brian. Just a quick note. I am looking for a full-time gardener to work. My number is 5260002. Now, I am announcing this number simply because I wrote back to the listener, asked if they wanted me to publicly announce that, and the person pointed out, yes, so I have done so. There is an individual who's looking for a full-time, not not just for the Christmas season, for a full-time gardener to work. Contact number is 5260 Zero, zero, two. And I want to thank that listener for providing this information, and I wish you every success in your endeavors, and I hope that you find a good, hard-working Caymanian to take up that challenge uh, with you and to take up that employment. I'm going to try my best to make sure to help that person as well, because I know a few people, so... Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised to get a phone call from me as well. <laughs> uh, yes, OC, so trying to get back to some of the things that transpired in the LA. And, and I want to remind the public that you can go to the GIS website, which is a government information services website. They have a YouTube channel there. And on the YouTube channel, they, they, the, that department has uploaded all the, the um, proceedings of the House so you can get more of an elaborate um, explanation to some of these questions from the ministers that I've asked. I'm just doing a bit of a briefing here so you can get an idea. And later on, um, I'm going to be breaking them down into parts and putting them on my Facebook page. So for those who want to follow me on Facebook and watch from there, because I think it's important to update the people. Okay, we have one caller. Let's go to the phone lines. Paul, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yeah, Mr. For the Record. Uh, morning, Doc. How are you? Uh, good morning, Mr. Kenneth Bryan. Good morning, Mr. McPhil. Um, I just want to, a point of clarity here, uh, if I'm permitted to do that. Sure, sure. Um, I don't think it's any use of you speaking to the minister who's in charge of education. Uh, about the the um, the mortgage the mortgage system, they, and, and 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 about the the land registry, the registered land law has nothing to do with the mortgage document that the the relationship between the the mortgagee and the mortgagee. 
the only 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 relationship between the land registry and the mortgage is that the law provides the land the, the land the land registry law provides a mechanism for the for the mortgagee to be protected by having the charge against the property registered in the land in the land registry against the against against the the, the, the mortgage property. But I noticed in two thousand and four and I don't know how we got there I think it's Section 65 or Section 66 of the, of the Registered Land Law, that it says that when the mortgage mortgagor pays the mortgagee, the, the mortgage payment, the half goes to the principal and half goes to the interest. That's in the land law. How it got there, I don't know, because <laughs> the land law has nothing to do with the relationship, with the contract between the bank and the lender mm-hmm. and the lendee. I don't know how it got there, but that's, that's where it is. Now, now, we have we have adopted laws from New Zealand or Beatum. We have adopted laws from United Kingdom or Beatum. We have adopted everything that, that, that we can adopt. There is a law in England, Consumer Credit Act, Act that protects the bank and protects the their 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 the the, lend, the, the lendee, the borrower. It is a comprehensive law. It is. It has been there since 1974. It gives the court the right to regulate the mortgage contract, the relationship between the mortgagee and the mortgagor. That's what it does. Now, I have said so many times on the radio yep, 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 and everywhere about getting that provision in the Cayman Islands enacted. I have, I, 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 the, the members of the opposition some time ago, some months ago, asked me if I would do it for them and they would pay me. I was supposed to have met some of them one morning. They made an arrangement the night before to meet them for lunch to breakfast. When I went to the breakfast, only one of them turned up. Only one of them turned up. And I waited and waited for the others to turn up. They never turned up. Now, I dropped a proposal for them. Um, of, of, of the time would take to get to get the to get the amendment amendment to the, the proposed law that the government was bringing, which was called a consumer the consumer Act, uh, which has nothing to do with consumer credit. The consumer act has to do with appliances, cars, things that it must be suitable for the for, for the reason why you buy them. Now, I could slip it in there or bring a separate law, but they have to pay me. I am not doing it for nothing because they, they you how, how many people you have on the opposition side of the house? There's there's five opposition members and one independent. Yeah, so I'll speak to you. Hmm. And not only you can bring a, a private member's bill with the law to enact that. In other jurisdictions, they would have had that bill before the house already. But, but and I know if this if this had existed with Jim Bodden days, Jim Bodden, Kate Bodden and, and Captain Reed and then would have had the bill before the House of Private Members bill before the House already to have this law enacted to protect the people's rights. Because what 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 some banks are doing is completely not fair. Because you cannot be paying you cannot be paying five hundred you cannot be paying a more um, the, the, the the mortgage on a house five hundred thousand dollars one day and then the next day the house is only worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That is not right and it's not fair. But we you, you don't have any legislators who have the guts to do anything about it. Mr. Macfield, I, 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 I really resent that, you know. Do not say we don't have the guts because I have uh, I have a lot of heart and I'm not afraid to do anything. But let's be realistic about something. I'm not trying to be rude. But you're talking about paying for drafting. The government has a whole drafting team. This, okay, Mr. Macfield, let me, let, me just, let me just say this piece. I'm trying to explain, right? I agree. I would love nothing better than to give you $50,000 for you can draft that bill. But even after that bill was done, right? Because I don't have the money to give you. And I don't think that we can afford an opposition while the people... Okay, okay. I didn't, I, I didn't say. Okay, I didn't say that you said it was fifty thousand dollars. But let's just say whatever nominal amount it is. But the government has a drafting team that is paid for by the people, while the opposition members have to go find money out of their own pocket to get the drafting done out of their own salaries to try to do something on behalf of the people. These are some of the things that needs to be considered. Not only that, let's just say, for instance, we got the money and paid for it out of our own pockets for the legal drafting. Then it goes to the house, and the government goes, "I don't want it anyway." 
Hence the reason my course of action at this stage is to try to work with the minister to get the solution done. Now, the, the minister of financial services, not the minister of education, as you suggested, has said to me, the, the, the legal reform group has given the commitment to look at all the legislation and regulation surrounding the relationship with banks and, and borrowers, okay, to see if there's ways of improvement so you can have public consultation. So one of those ways of public consultation can to be asked that legal reform group, can you consider this legislation that is in the UK and have it duplicated here? So the process is going to get there. It's just a different way of getting there. I honestly would love, if, if I had the money, Dr. McField, I would love to have you a part of my team. You're a very strong man, an educated, well-rounded individual who offers this country so much. But you can't get mad at us if we don't have the money to, 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 to offer you for those services, sir. <laughs> I'm not getting mad at you for that. I can say that you have so many of you on the back bench and not one of you are qualified to draft a bill. To draft a bill. To are you suggesting that all members of the house all the members of the house should be all lawyers? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 they don't have to be all lawyers. So, so when you right, say we're not mean, qualified to do it, I don't understand what that means. They should be they should be they should be they should be able to cross a, a, a private member's bill to bring to the house. Is, That's what it should be. Okay, someone, let me, on your, someone on the other side should be able to do that. Well well how many members on the government side can draft a bill? Who do you think drafts the bills for government that comes to the you house? Say, you say all, all you're doing is making excuses. I'm not making excuses. I'm telling you the facts, Mr. McPhee. For years now, for years now, people have been losing their houses and you're sitting now waiting for the government to do something about it. And the government has, has demonstrated they have done nothing about it and do their to do anybody very soon. And so, and so if the government hasn't done anything about it and people are losing houses, the opposition should be doing something about it and bring it and let the government shoot it down. All right, Doc. Thank you very much for that. I, I think it's the last point there. Um, and I understand what you're saying. You know, we can do it, but at the end of the day, it's going to reach a point. His point is that do it anyway, let it sit there. Not only that, I would add to what he says. If you do it, and the opposition is always seen as the government in waiting. Mm -hmm. So when you're no longer waiting, if you're no longer waiting and you're in government, then you have it right there. To, to take it and bring it in, uh, in, well, in, in, into well, effect. Well, OCA, I agree. But I'm going to give you one example. There was a, a bit of draft legislation that was done before the election or something that I had hoped to bring in if I was a member of the government. It cost us $37,000 to get the drafting done. That's how expensive drafting is. And this is one of the things you may have heard the opposition leader talk about, about the unfairness that legal drafting isn't available for opposition mm -hmm. to, drink, to bring a bill. Now, 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 do the rules prevent you from going out there and seeking private donations to assist with that? Uh, to be honest with you, I wish you can show me where I'm allowed to get private donations for it because there's no way I'm trying to figure out ways to raise money. But is, there, is there a way that uh, prohibits? Is there anything that prohibits you from Well, well when you're raising any money at all, um, mm -hmm. you have to have justifications for it now under the new non-profits law. Um, you have to have, uh, as well as when you're requesting, particularly for MLAs, and I'm not fully rehearsed in this, so don't, don't, don't quote me on it, but mm -hmm. I'm at the same stage of concern now where I'm concerned about how bring, how do I collect money to do things in my community. Because the one way I was hoping to do that was through the district council's law, mm -hmm. where there's line items in there that suggest I can raise money on behalf of my job as a representative, but the premier doesn't want to yeah. implement that either. So, so it's, by all means, I think we have to, have to look at creative ways of doing it. Let's take this commercial break, yeah. folks. For the record, we'll be back shortly. Yeah, you got to look at creative. The Cayman Pharmacy Group would like to thank the Cayman communities for their continuous support for over the past decade. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy opened its doors in March 2000. West Bay Pharmacy first opened their doors in March 2004. The Cayman Pharmacy Group was established in July 2007. Throughout the years, our CPG family has provided more than just pharmaceuticals to our loyal friends and customers. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has protected the lives of our medical community by securing the best health care advice and pharmaceutical services. To us at CPG, you are more than just a number. So we are taking the time to say thank you for choosing CPG. The Cayman Pharmacy Group, taking care of your health. Rotary Central Music Extravaganza is back. November is your lucky month with your Rotary Central Music Extravaganza ticket purchase of only $25. Win that grand prize of $40,000, second prize $4,000, and six $1,000 prizes. Yes, the 23rd annual Music Extravaganza, Saturday, November 24th. Royal Palms, West Bay Road, from 7 p.m. Music by Dr. Bob's Experiment, Fire Squad, and Altered Minds. Only a few more days, only 8,000 golden tickets. Get your tickets now through points of sale at Funky Tanks, Outskirt Ticket Sales at Ale Thompson's, Foster Supermarket. 
Supermarkets locations island-wide. Jake Scott Warehouse Store on Shedden Road and West Bay. Perkop in Governor's Square. Rubis, Walker's Road. Esso on the run in Red Bay. Tortuga Store, Governor's Square. Jose's Rubis. Lorna's Rubis in Bodentown. Four-Way Esso, West Bay. Seven Mile Beach Esso. Cost you less and www.eventpro.ky. Rotary Central Music Extravaganza Proceeds Fund over 50 community inspiration products. Be a winner. Buy a ticket. Support your community. Your ticket. Your chance. Your community. Not all insurance is created equal, but who has the time to shop around? Take the guesswork out of your insurance coverage with Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Let us match you with the best coverage to suit your needs at a price to suit your wallet. Plus, get superior customer service from dedicated claims professionals to ensure speedy claims processing. Get your insurance through Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. Did you know that recycling collection containers are located island-wide in Grand Cayman? The Department of Environmental Health Program is an integral part of DEH's waste management responsibility in the Cayman Islands. Start your recycling program at home today. Put your cardboard items in appropriate DEH recycling containers at all Foster's supermarkets, Kirk Market, or Hurley's Grand Harbor. Help keep Cayman clean. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. For more information about recycling, go to www.deh.gov.ky. Cayman's cruise industry must be preserved and developed. It is a myth that the cruise lines will continue to call on Cayman at the rate they do now without the piers. It is a fact that the mega-class ships will not be tendered. Arrivals will decline by half over time as the older ships are decommissioned. This will hurt our economy and thousands of Caymanians who work in this industry. If we want to continue providing opportunities for Caymanians, we need the piers. Support the pairs. Support our tourism. Initiating system. For information that matters. For the record with Orit Connor. Continues right now on Radio K-Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me, uh, MLA, Mr. Kenneth Bryan. Uh, two, two things uh, that I want to read very quickly. First one was, um, it was uh, um, former... Uh, Minister and MLA, Mr. Gilbert McLean, uh, not the Honorable uh, Kurt Tibbetts that um, had the study conducted on flood management. Okay. And, um, uh, well, well I, sure, I, I, hope ahead, I, I hope I didn't get that wrong in respect to what was said on the floor of the House, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm almost certain that the, the discussion and the Minister said to me that the old study was done by the Honorable uh, Kurt Tibbetts. Maybe they, well, they're both good men, so maybe they did it together. I don't know. I, by all means, I'm trying to take away credit from one person and give it to the other. But both men were, were um, uh, quite sure in the government at the same time. Um, so maybe there was a hand in hand working together thing. Okay. And earlier, before you uh, got uh, here, I was reading some of the news about the Legislative Assembly, and I was reading from the Compass in relation to the amendment to the immigration law to allow for persons who had exceeded their term limit to uh, apply for permanent residence. And this this listener has said, I would like to know how many bloody times we will have to, quote unquote, regularize the immigration status of people coming to our islands. It seems like every year government is rushing through or amending legislation to remedy this. The very first act that Premier McLaughlin did was pass legislation to save the Talibs. It amazes me how our immigration law slash policies change so quickly, not to the benefit of Caymanians. So uh, and, and we have heard people say that over and over again, that we're quick to, to change things, to correct things, uh, when they adversely affect non Caymanians, but when they affect Caymanians, it takes much longer, longer for the wheel, for the wheels <laughs> to turn to get in motion to do things for Caymanians. But you yeah. see, some days it's just gonna be a laugh, you know, because we see it as clear as day as what's happening in this country. But we still put the people in power who will not stand up to change it. And and, I, and most times I'm not sure if I should cry or I should just laugh. But the, the, the person who sent in the comment is 100 percent correct. Um, that's the reality we live in. But I must give um, acknowledge that there is a very um, multifaceted um, um, uh, uh, system of immigration and, and growth in our nation. We have so many different um, nationalities here, so many um, 
new Caymanians and so many came, um, born kids who are grown in our country that are, are, are not, their parents are not Caymanian, but they're born here and grown here and this is what they know and they actually haven't officially become Caymanian yet. But it, it reminds me of a case where there was one of my close friends that I went to school with all through George and Premier, all through high school and everything. And I remember I became the um, political assistant to the Premier. And he called me up by the government um, building. He said, can I need to talk to you? I need to talk to you. He came down and said something very important. It's about immigration. I'm like, immigration? What are you talking about? When he gets downstairs, he said, the immigration is trying to send me out to Jamaica. And I don't know what to do. I've, I don't know I don't know how to live in Jamaica. I've, I've, I've probably been there about four times in my life. <clears throat> now, his parents are from Jamaica. And he never officially got sorted out in immigration. And he was, I think, about 27 at the time. Uh, right, and yeah, he no, no, no. It was when I was a premier, so well, he was thirty something, because um, I was I mean, he was the same age. And I go to myself. I said, Do "You not came on in? He's like, "No, my parents from Jamaica." And, and, and like, I said, "But how could how could this person that I grew up with and I love and know and is my friend and we share memories together? We fish in the nine shore together. We pick mangoes together. We got in trouble in school together. We, we you know we we, we 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 went out to the club for the first time together and all those types of things." And I'm going. The system sees him as not as a Caymanian, and that really bothered me. And that's, that's the human element of, of, of these immigration changes that we don't sometimes recognize. But the system didn't see him. The system defined him as not being Caymanian. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and these are the human elements that, that, that sometimes legislation does not really identify. And, and, and it's not an easy job. And I, I, by all means, give a lot of credit. Not, mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. I, I don't envy the premiers, probably the words I should say, in respect to handling of the immigration changes because it's very complex. We are growing society. You have to, in one hand, by way of legislation, try to, or, or firstly, protect the Caymanian way and what we perceive as to be Caymanian. At the same time, um, address the development of the country because we're like a little United States, you know, where, you know, it's built on immigration. Um, and that's not easy because people have feel, felt, particularly Caymanians, uh, what we call generational Caymanians, have felt marginalized for so many years now that any change that seems to be in favor of anybody else <laughs> that is not for Caymanian, because of other things that have been happening, we were really, really mad about it. See, if other things were going well for us and that we, were, we were succeeding in this economy and our kids were getting jobs and the cost of living wasn't so bad, they'd be like, because genuinely Caymanians are kind people. This is where the whole Cayman kind comes from. They'd be like, come on down. Mm-hmm. We'd love to add more people. But how can we be that embracive, uh, um, to embrace people when things are not going so well for us? You know, and, and that's where the attitude comes from. So by all means, I say I don't envy the premier in dealing with the immigration element um, because no matter what happens, if it goes good or bad, he's going to get um, some sort mm-hmm. of a lift for it. Um, but, you know, no, no, there, there's a moral as well as a legal obligation. To yes. Yes. Thing, so, yes. Yes. No, yes. Question, no question um, about that as well. The same way that there is a moral and legal obligation to ensure that you take care your of people. Uh, your people. Your, your exactly. Role. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And, and, and I think I think what the sentiment is that he's not more in favor of the people, he's more in favor of those who are coming. And I see, I see, I see. That, that people, some people form that impression. Impression, that's what I mean, yeah. Some people form yeah, that Yeah, yeah. By all means, I'm not saying it is factual. I'm saying this is where people get that feeling within their hearts. And, and, and you can interpret a policy decision to be one way or the other. Um, whatever the majority feels usually reflects the, the outcome of elections, mm-hmm. per se. But in so, this, so, sorry. <coughs> I was going to say, in this particular case, it isn't necessarily only... Uh, non Caymanians uh, that are benefiting from this, but there are instances where these persons who have been affected by their inability to um, apply for um, permanent residence have Caymanian children. Yes, yes, very important so, point. So, so Caymanians have to be mindful of that. that. Yes. Yeah, you know, I mean, and, and not only that, um, you know, they're married to Caymanians um, or. or their other family members are yeah. Caymanian. Well, in this case, uh, those who are divo- uh, if they were married to Caymanian, they're okay, but they're, they're divorced. Yeah. Because if yeah. they're yeah. married to Caymanians, they have a, a, a yeah, it's you know, still a children, pathway. Yeah. It's, yes. Uh, yes, yes, those yes, yes. who are no longer have that Caymanian connection in terms of the So the, the most important part and, of the case. Uh, and the, the article points out that there are 145 government, at least 145 government employees, workers who find themselves in that particular situation as well. Were you... Were you um, <sighs> There on the debate, uh, I'm yep. sure you were there. Yes, on I, that. Was there. Uh, I was there. Uh, did you participate in it? Yes, in, in it. Yes, I did. Um, but I focused from the merger part of the immigration element to to NWDA now calling it work. <laughs> I was focusing more on the labor part. Um, the honourable elected member from East End was focusing more on the immigration part. But you know, one key part that came out of all of that that was kind of related to education is that with this influx of persons who are going to potentially be Caymanian soon, and the growth of the population. Is this going to be affecting the school population in any way? Uh, because with the increase of cost of private schools, many Caymanians who are going to have their kids going to private school are rethinking because they can't necessarily afford it. There's been increases almost every single year where the school my kids go to. Um, and, and we're finding a lot of people who are going, you know what, 
think it's time to put them in, in government school. So, so with these immigration changes, with the high cost of of, of school, um, will we see an influence uh, or influx on the pressure to for public schools? And, and it's something that we have to consider. And and the questions came to the education minister and and, and follow up questions to say, are we preparing? Because the growth is happening and the demand on public schools is going to be greater within the coming years. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. And final uh, yes, uh, comments, yes. And closing get, comments. I need to get my head down <laughs> to the LA. I want to say before I go um, to Dr. McPhail, I want to say thank you so much for continuing um, to, to offer uh, opportunities and advice of how to go about things. Um, sometimes we differ on the viewpoints of how to get there, but I think we're ultimately fighting for the same thing. Um, but sometimes my strategy may, may be a, a little bit different, and I, and I think that some strategies can be, can be workable, and I think he's right, and I, and I appreciate that he continues to fight on behalf of, of, of issues such as um, foreclosures and, and, uh, and the like. Um, so all the love in the world for you, and I want this to seem as, as we're uh, having um, any negative conversations. Uh, but also to, to thank everybody for, for tuning in and listening in, um, I would encourage you to tune into the Legislative Assembly. Sometimes I know it does get boring and, and, and it's long and drawn out, but there are very important things that are being done in the Legislative Assembly that affects all of our lives. If you can't do it right now because you're at work, you know, try to see if you can tune in on GIS um, later on in the evening. And or Radio K-Man. Or Radio K-Man as well. Re-broadcast. I, I know that there's some avid listeners who don't miss it. They <laughs> say, oh, can I listen to you on your debate last night? And I say, oh, thank you so much. So, But I want to try to see if we can grow that. And if you already are a listener, Find somebody who doesn't listen and just say to them, did you know that it's on Radio Cayman at this time? Did you know that it's on GIS on Cayman 27 or what have, wherever it is? Encourage more people to listen. The more people that inform, the more of us are, are involved and we can find the solutions together. For too many years, only a small percentage of the people in this country make the decisions on behalf of us all because they're the ones that are paying close, close attention. We need more people to um, be in focus. That being said, we'll see. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. For all those who are listening, remember to love each other and love yourself. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Brand, folks. I want to thank you for allowing Radio K Man and by extension for the record into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I also want to ra- remind you that we are brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who's less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. You can do that in the form of offering employment during the holiday season so that those who are unemployed or underemployed will have an opportunity to share the uh, season, the joys of the season with their family and loved ones as well. So if you can't do anything other than donate to a worthy charity. We also encourage you to do that as well. I say to you, have a great day. Join me at 12.15 when I will again be guest hosting for Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealerships serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977.